Welcome everybody to the Daily Mastermind. I am Paul Baxter with Mortgage Mastermind Group. And uh, guys, it's, uh, we're here on the Daily Mastermind having an open discussion. So um, the last top producer interview, uh, Bill, so Bill's got a great question here. Um, I know some of us on the call are still accessing it through the, the um, you know, kind of my friend's type deal where, where I've given you access through the end of the month of July. Uh, but yeah, in order to get the realtor needs assessment, you do need to be able to register or sign in um, to the actual member site. Um, so Bill, if you, if you want to talk about that a little later, that's more than fine. I can give you a quick call and, and we can discuss that um, and, and see if there's a way we can't uh, get you access to those questions. Um, again, it, it was a fantastic class, and what we did is we, so, so if you weren't able to be on the class, and I can see there's, there's one or two of you that, that weren't able to be on the class on Friday, um, what we did is, um, just, let me just go backwards so I can kind of show you guys. In the members area, we've got a section called Chad's Corner. my computer could catch up to me. So we've got this section called Chad's Corner. And in Chad's Corner, there are several resources available to you. One of the things that, that we do is we've got, you know, we talk about consumer direct marketing, as you guys know, but we also are big proponents of referral networking, generating referral partnerships, specifically with real estate agents, uh, title companies. And that's what we kind of jumped into quite a bit on Friday is, is we believe that that's kind of the core to any of the marketing that you're going to do. You've got to have that core, that, that, that solid foundation. And a good referral base is that solid foundation, even before you get started with consumer direct marketing. Now, what consumer direct marketing can enhance what you do with your referral network, uh, but it's not the end all. For it. I, I, it, me personally, I wouldn't focus all of my efforts on consumer direct because the simple fact is, statistically, we know that a vast majority, we're talking 88% of potential home buyers are contacting a real estate agent before they're looking for financing for the home. So it's important to tap into that. I mean, that's a big number. You really have to have access. You really need to have a group of referral partners that are willing to share in, in buyer leads, that are looking to you as their go-to guy or go-to girl, as the case may be for some of you, um, for getting them to the closing table, for getting those buyers to the closing table. So it's very important that you have a referral network or a, a a marketing plan in place for targeting referral partners. And so we've got a referral partner strategy here, and in the referral partner strategy, there's an item called the Realtor Needs Assessment, as well as a commitment letter. And now we're going to cover this coming Friday, just so you guys know, make sure you have it scheduled. Um, this week's top producer interview, we're going to be going deep into the commitment letter it ties directly into what we did with the Realtor Needs Assessment. And so what the Realtor Needs Assessment is, is a way for you to have that, it's a way for you to have a face-to-face -face opportunity, but go deeper during that face-to-face, -face. More, much more so than just getting to know them about their family and what they like to do for fun and how long they've been in their job. That's all great information. That's part of the bonding. And I get, you know, that's great stuff. But it can't be the only thing that you do during that meeting because then you, you've really not done anything other than a little bit of bonding. And now you're searching and, and trying to figure out ways to have that second meeting or finding ways to be able to get in front of them multiple times and differentiate yourself. If it's just about the relationship, that's, that, I mean, that, that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That's great. You're building relationships. That's what it's all about because without a relationship, you'll never get those referrals. But you've got to have a way to build that relationship and it be a business type of relationship at the same time. And so that's what the Realtor Needs Assessment does for you. And it was very specific. Mm -hmm. 
I wish I had an open with. Why do I not have an open with? I want to open it with something else. I can't. Uh, I don't have a word on this little laptop that I'm using. This is a very scaled down laptop that I've got with me on uh, up here in Nebraska, and I, I don't have the way to open this. Uh, let me see. Bear with me one second, guys. I may already have this. Let me come to my drive here. I, th I thought I had uploaded it to drive, but I, I not positive. So bear with me. I don't. Um, oop, oop, oop. Nope. I sure don't. Oh, gone it. I wanted to kind of go through some of those questions. Um, hey, Chris, real quick, can you do me a favor and email me the realtor needs assessment as an attachment? Can you shoot me an email real quick and, and send that realtor needs assessment as an attachment for me? Um, I may be able to open with Google Drive if it's in there as an attachment, and I, I really want to kind of bust down that. Yeah, I, I know I had it down there, but I don't have word. I, 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 I don't have word on my computer, and so if I go to click on it, this is just an old scaled down version, just a, a cheapo special um, that I picked up. And if I try to open this, it, 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 it will attempt to open it in a word startup just to kind of give you a basic view but it never loads on this computer and I still have not been able to figure out how to make that sucker load um, because Word just won't start up. I don't have the, the Microsoft Office program in here, but I, if I can right click on it and open with, I should be in good shape. So Chris, if you could please shoot me over an email with that attached in there and I should be able to I should be able to right click and open it with uh, Google Drive. It should show me that option. I'm hoping it shows me that option. And Chris says, I just sent it. Awesome. So that should be coming through any second here. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. So let me come in here. There it is. So there we go. Saving the drive. Save as. Ah. Uh. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. All right. Sorry for the delay on that, guys. We've got her. We've got her opening up as we speak, so we can kind of just plow through some of these, some of these questions here, um, and they're really. The thing you're going to keep hearing from us and, and we believe firmly in is purposeful, planned implementation. And so the order in which, and that, that's the thing I want to reiterate, and, and we made the point on Friday, I want to make sure that I reiterate that the questions here are not thrown together willy-nilly. This is not something that it's just a wing it kind of situation. The questions were put together in a purposeful, planned way to be able to lead you or lead the person you're, you're working with or looking to work with or the, the realtor you're looking to partner with, it leads them down the path that you're trying to go. 
And so the order that these questions are in are really in an order that kind of takes them down that path. You begin to bond with them as you go through them. You begin to differentiate yourself um, from the competition. Now the first few are the questions that they're expecting. What kind of production goals do you have for 2014? That's a question they're, they're expecting from you. Um, because they know, I mean, you're, you're getting together, you're looking to talk about partnerships. What amount of production did you do last year? What amount of production have you done year to date? So you're starting to lead them and their mindset is going with, you know, they're starting to understand that you're asking questions about their business, but you're asking questions in a format or, or in a direction that's getting them to start looking at, okay, here's what my goal was, here's what I've done so far, here's what I've done compared to last year, what is my percentage to my goal that, that I'm actually, am I on track to hit my goal, am I not on track to hit my goal? And, and I'm starting to think about that if you're asking these questions to me as we go through. How many units does this equate to? So most people are going to answer those questions, you know, well, I'd like to do 20 million this year. I'd like to do 17 million this year. Well, I did 5 million last year and I'd like to double that. All right, how much production have you done year to date? Well, I'm only at 2.5. Well, when you wanted to get to 10, we're halfway there. You've got a good idea as to whether or not they're meeting their goals lets you know whether or not that person is going to be one that, that is in need of some help in terms of marketing and things like that. How many buyers? How many listings? Uh, it gives you an idea. They're now thinking about their business and buyers and listings, but you now have a great idea as to whether or not you're dealing with somebody that, you know, is, is doing a ton of short sales or is dealing with a ton of people that, uh, or, or just doing listings and you know, a lot of the top producers typically will, will show both sides, but if they're top producers, they're typically going to have a team. Part of their team deals with all the buyers. Part of their team deals with all the listings, and they come together in the middle, and their, their records show differently. So it's important to, to get this information down, but the way that you're asking the questions, and that's the point I'm trying to make, is that the direction or the order in which you ask these questions and the way that you're asking the questions to the person is you're kind of leading them down the path. What is important about your current mortgage lender? What is important to you about your current mortgage lender? That's, that's you taking that objection out of the mix before it even comes, comes up with the prospect or the target that you're talking to. And I think that that's a really, really important part for you to understand. I hear it all the time. Well, I, tar I called up and they said, they, you know, I, they said they're already working with somebody. Well, of course they're already working with somebody. If they're doing any kind of business, that means that they've worked with a lender of some sort in some fashion, some way, shape, or form. There, you'll very seldom, especially, not even especially, 100%, if they're doing any amount of business, the likelihood is that they have some sort of a relationship, good, bad, or indifferent, I, that's not what we're talking about, They've got some sort of a relationship with a lender already or they wouldn't be getting to the closing table. That's just how it works in the business that we're in. And so you're starting to get them to talk about that other relationship and you do it in a proactive instead of a reactive way by putting it out there. Hey, what's important to you about your current mortgage lender? You're asking them, what do you like about your mortgage lender? And then, you know, notice that that's just kind of thrown in there as you're talking about their business and things. And then you go right back to them. You bring it right back to them. How do you generate leads? Does your current mortgage lender help you generate leads? That's just one of those little things that you're kind of putting in there as a, sub I don't want to say a subliminal message because there's nothing subliminal about it. You're asking them a point bank question, but in the back of their mind, they're thinking, no, my mortgage lender doesn't help me generate leads, but why is this guy asking? Is that what he's going to do? You're starting to plant that, that seed, or as our good friend Alan Gross likes to say, you're starting to buy those brain cells a little bit 
in terms of what it is that you're looking to bring to the relationship, you're beginning to to get those little bit, you know, you're, you're kind of creating the recipe, so to speak. You added the flour, now you've added a little bit of water and it's starting to thicken up a little bit. You're bringing those things to the table. What do you admire most, or who do you admire most in the real estate? state industry and why and there's a that's, there's two reasons for that specific question and the number one reason for me is especially if I happen to know who it is that they admire in the real estate industry I'm now starting to see okay he likes or he admires so and so I know that so and so does business this way they've organized their team in this fashion this is how they manage and operate their real estate business great if I can help them to mimic and emulate that well then I can create that relationship uh, how do you think they will respond to production numbers I'd submit that that you will have to already have established a trust factor questions one through four that's kind of you got to remember you're not going to sit down and bust right into it uh, Bill, you're going to do what, you know, I mentioned the other day that we are in this business because we are people persons. We are not the introverts that sit behind a desk and crunch numbers. You know, accountants are, I mean, and I'm, I'm classifying or generalizing here, but in a, for the most part, I guess is the best way to say that, you know, an accountant is not so much a people person. He's, he's the type of person that enjoys sitting behind a computer or behind a calculator and crunching numbers and figuring out where to, where to cut costs here or save some money. They're not the type of people to go out and just be in a, in a room full of people and start talking and generating friends. They're going to sit on the back, you know, in the back. They're introverts. We are not introverts. We're extroverts. We're a people persons. That's what brought us to this industry. You know, I believe wholeheartedly that people get into careers based on their personality types. And that's what we've done, in my opinion, what mortgage lenders are, are people that have gotten into a career because, you know, I know my personality type. I love talking to people. I could walk up to any situation and I could feel comfortable talking to anyone about most things in most situations. And, and I don't have a problem, you know, creating new friends in any situation. And so to be able to ask those first four questions, I understand where you're coming from, Bill. You know, you want people to answer those questions. If you just jump right into that, you know, you sit down, you shake their hand. Hey, Bill, good to meet you. What kind of production goals do you have for 2014? You're going to look at me like, oh, gosh, here it comes. He's going to start asking me for leads. I may not even get the question five if I do it that way. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to shake your Hey, Bill, Paul Baxter, great to meet you. Listen, I appreciate you taking the time for me today. Really great for you to meet me out here. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the real estate industry? That's awesome. Are you a married man? Do you have children? Oh, you do. That's fantastic. Great. Yeah, I'm married also. Sure. Yep. Been married uh, just, a, you know, just a couple of months now. Newlywed. Sure. Thank you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do a little bit of the small talk bonding. I'm not going to go into a full 30 minutes of trying to get to know them. That's not the point. I'm trying to differentiate myself from others. But I'm certainly going to create a little bit of small talk. And I'm still not going to have that full bonding experience before I start asking my questions. But if I don't... If I do some of the small things where I kind of get a little bit of charm going on, so to speak, you know, ask them a little bit of personal stuff, you know, kind of shake their hand and sit down and make a little bit of small talk first, then I can say to them, hey, listen, one of the things that I, I'm known for is helping uh, real estate agents to grow their business by helping them with different things that they need help with, whether it be marketing or mindset or lead generation and things like that. And so what I've done is I've come up with this little survey that I like to do to kind of find out where you are and see if there are some things that I can help you with and discover ways to help you grow their biz your business. Would it be okay with you if I ask you a few questions? Yes, it would. Great. Listen, as I ask questions, I want to make sure 
that I can that are there are some things that I can help with that that I certainly do my due diligence to make that happen. Is it okay with you if I take some notes? Sure. Now you're now that's different. Now instead of it just being me asking them about their production goals, I told them I'm looking to try and help you grow your business. I'm looking to discover ways that I can help you grow your business. It's important enough to me that I'm asking if I can take notes so that I can, if there are some things there, um, help you grow your business and discover those things. So I've differentiated myself. By saying those things, I believe in my heart and in my mind, I'm now, I've opened that door to be able to go through my questions and get them to answer them because I've, I've set it up the right way. Does that make sense, Bill? It's you can't just and you can't just jump into it. I agree with you there. You're probably not going to get your questions answered if you just jump into it. But if you set it up the right way, if you prepare them, hey, listen. One of the things I'm I'm known for is helping my realtor partners be able to discover ways to grow their business, and I've come up with a little survey that helps me to discover or helps us to understand where your business is at and discover if there are some places where there are gaps in, in what you're doing and be able to fill those gaps to help you in, increase your production for this year. Is that something you would be interested in, increasing your production for this year? Yes? Fantastic. Listen, to make sure that we don't, that, that if there are some small things that, that we don't discuss today, I want to be able to go back over some notes and be able to find things that can help you. Is it okay with you if I take some notes? Yes, it is. Fantastic. <laughs> I'd love to come up there and go on some of your sales calls with you, Bill. I'd be glad to do so. I, I'm a big fan of, uh, you're in Virginia, right? I absolutely love Virginia. Virginia Beach is, is a great place, and this time of year especially, as long as I get to Virginia Beach and get some surfing in, be glad to come up there and help you on some of your sales calls. But the point is, is if I set it up the right way, if I just jump into it now, they're not going to answer those questions for me. But if I set it up in a fashion, if I set it up, if I kind of give them a little bit of something, you know, let them know what I'm doing in a way that uh, that makes them feel as if I'm there to help them. This meeting is about them. It's not about you in any way, shape, or form. It's about them. Then I'm more apt to get them to answer my questions because they feel as if they're providing an answer to be able to help their own business. They're just answering a survey to be able to help their own business. And I'm going to tell you, if you're sitting with somebody that says, no, I'm really not interested in that, awesome. I appreciate your honesty and taking the time to meet me today. Listen, I don't know that we're going to be a good fit for one another. I'm pretty aggressive in, in, in my sales approach, and I'm always looking for ways to grow my business, and I'm also looking for partners who are looking to grow their business. And uh, listen, no, you know that, that's awesome. You're in a place in your business that you don't feel as if you need some help, so good luck to you. Uh, is there anybody that you know that is in the process of looking to grow their business now that I should give a call to. And, and that's as simple as that. If I set it up and ask, can I do this survey with you, and can I take notes, and if they say no, awesome. Well, listen, thanks for taking the time with me today. I don't know that we're going to be a good fit for one another. Uh, good luck in your business. And uh, again, is there anybody in your in your office that you know or any other realtors that you know that are looking to generate more leads, more referrals, and grow their business through partnerships? They're going to tell you no on that, but you just let them know basically straight up front that, you know, they, most of the time if you ask it the right way and if you set it the right way and if they still say no, it's a smoke screen. That's all that is, is somebody just being guarded. It's a smoke screen. It's, it, it's not a person that you want to start to develop your relationship with anyway. And so that's, that's my thought process on that, and so I, I'm not going to ever say it's a numbers game because I don't believe that creating referral partnerships is a numbers game. You know, I've heard other coaches in this industry with other programs talk about, well, it's a numbers game. If, I, if you call 40 realtors every day and you, and you say, hey, I'm looking to partner with real estate agents, Do you, I'd love to meet you for coffee and talk about how I can get you to the closing table faster. 
Well, sure, if I call 40 people a day with that script, I'm going to get one or two of them to meet with me. I may even achieve the goal of getting five a week. <laughs> but the reality is, is you're burning through numbers. You're, it's not a numbers game. It's a relationship game. That's what we're in is a relationship game. And we're marketers first, loan officers second. And that's the mindset you have to go into it with. You know, for me, calling 40 real estate agents with, with some, you know, with no purposeful planned implementation without anything other than I'm going to get a coffee meeting with them and then I'm going to tell them how fast I am at closing and how great I am at communication and then ask them for business and ask them for business on the first meeting, absolutely. Man, it'll take me 15, 20, 25 people meeting face to face to get that one person who's willing to do leads with me or willing to work with me. What about if I made 10 calls with a specific purposeful planned process for getting them to meet with me. And, and then when I met with them, I had a purposeful planned process for getting them to like me, see me as somebody that is a potential partner, or see me as somebody that can help them in their business. If I can make 10 calls and get that impact, if I can get that same five face-to-faces on those 10 calls, well, that leaves me 10 to call next week and 10 to call the week after. I don't need to call a specific number of people if I'm doing it the right way and I'm getting those face-to-faces, it has nothing to do with a number, guys. This is not a numbers game. It's a relationship game. And the better you become at creating the relationship, getting that kickstart, having a reason to call them, having a reason to meet face-to-face, -face, having a reason to have that second meeting, having specific things that I'm going to ask them that lead them to believing that I'm a person that can help them in their business, well, doesn't it sir, stand to reason that I'm going to have a better opportunity of becoming a referral partner or becoming the go-to lender for that particular person, much more so than just hammering, dialing, 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 dialing? with nothing really specific to say, with nothing really specific to do other than meet me for coffee so I can ask you for business? No, it's not a numbers game. This is a relationship game that we're in, you guys. And girls, sorry about that. So for me, it's all about having the right things to say up front, having a reason to get the appointment. Once I'm at the appointment, setting up the right way by saying, hey, look, one of the things I'm known for is helping realtors grow their business by analyzing what they're currently doing and developing a specific plan of action for them to be able to move through some of the roadblocks that they've incurred in their business to get to their goals that they've got, that they've set for themselves and their family. Does that sound fair to you? Fantastic. One of the things I like to do to make sure that I discover different ways to be able to help you is I take notes to make sure that I don't miss anything. Is it okay with you if I take some notes? It is? Great. You've already differentiated yourself right there just with that piece. And I probably should come up with a script on something like that because I think I've said it. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. I think I've said it three different ways <laughs> in the three times that I've said it. Um, but the gist and the point and the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, uh, the purpose behind it, there's a good word. The purpose of it is, is the same, all three ways that I said it, it just came out a little bit different. As you guys know, I spent, I spent a half of my, <laughs> I spent a portion of my lifetime in a call center and that's all I did is I did do the numbers game. I did hammer the phone. And it didn't take me very long sitting in that chair with the call or with the dialer thing right in front of me. Now I wasn't calling real estate agents, I was calling on car dealers, but it's a similar kind of thing. I was cold calling people without any kind of plan, without any, you know, I had what I wanted to say, but I didn't have a plan to lead them down the path of knowing that I could be a partner in their business. It was just me picking up the phone. Hey, are you generating car? I mean, I can't even remember what my script was, but it didn't take me very long sitting in that chair to, to realize that if I had 
a better way to create with those people or differentiate myself with my target from all the other competitors in my industry, if I had a better way to differentiate myself, well then I was getting more production. My, each call was more productive than just the same old, just the same number. You know, if, if I hit this number, I'm going to get two people to say yes. Well, what if I hit that number and if I had the right thing to say, instead of two, I got four. Instead of four, I got eight. That's when I started working on how to develop the right kind of script, how to develop the right words to say to move those people past Oh, here's another direct mail sales guy. Great. I wasn't the same as everybody else. I didn't want to be the same as everybody else. I wanted to differentiate myself. And to be honest, I didn't want to have to hammer 100 calls a day. I wanted to make 20 calls and get the same amount of impact that everybody in the room was having with their 100. I wanted to be able to close at a higher percentage, and I found that with the right introduction with the right lead-in, if I asked the right questions before I went into my pitch or before I went into what I had to offer, then I could get much further down the road and I had a much higher closing rate. That's why I was successful in what I did because I thought it through. I created a purposeful planned process for implementing or getting people to recognize that I was different. That led to better, more, more productive conversations. Now, my goal was not face-to-faces, so I'm not going to say it led to more face-to-faces, but it certainly led to more productive conversations. I noticed that my call time went from a minute and 30 seconds to four and a half, five minutes per call. That's because I was having better, more meaningful conversations. It wasn't just, it wasn't just, hi, this is so-and-so from so-and-so. I'd love to meet you for coffee and, and talk about how, you know, I can help you get more closings. Okay, how? Because that's the first question I'm going to ask. You're not going to get face-to-face -face with me with that kind of a script. It's more about, I'm known for doing this. I would love an opportunity. I've heard a great thing. I've heard that you're... What is our script that we came up with? I don't have it in front of me. It's on the PowerPoint, but we came up with a script uh, last week specifically for this, and it, and, and it plays on those, you know, what I was just saying. I heard that you are a person that is very interested or is known for doing things to grow your, more, your real estate business. I would love to treat you to a coffee take 20 or 30 minutes of your time and find out if there are some things that I can do to help you in that process. Is Thursday at 3 or Friday at 2 better for you? So what I've done there, I didn't talk about what I offer that's different than anybody else. I didn't talk about me or how I can do things. I just said I heard, I complimented them. I've heard that you're a guy that is always looking for new ways to improve and grow your real estate business. I would love to treat you to a coffee, take 20 or 30 minutes of your time, and find out if there are some things that I can do to help you in that process. Again, help you in that process. I didn't say anything about selling you something, partnering with you, exchanging referral leads, or any of that stuff. I just want to help you in your process because I heard you're a guy that likes to do things to grow your business, always looking for new innovative ways to do that. Easy enough. It's different than just, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so. I would love to treat you to a cup of coffee on Thursday at so-and-so. Or what? Well, I can help you grow your business. Yeah, how? Now you're in a conversation about how, and you're now now you're stuck selling on the phone as opposed to being able to sell face to face. You never want to sell on the phone. All you're doing on the phone is getting the appointment. That's the whole purpose of those phone calls. 
And I know there are some out there in, in the coaching and training that tell you, you hit this number and that gives you this number and you've got to have this number. And uh, at the end of the week, I don't believe that. I, I do not believe that this is a numbers game. I believe wholeheartedly that this is a relationship game. And I know I got on a little bit of a soapbox there for a moment, and I apologize. Um, but the purpose of this was not to sit here and go through all of these questions with you. The purpose of it was to reiterate the fact that these questions were put in place in the order that they're put in place to lead that prospect or that target down the path first and foremost of see, as seeing you as somebody different, secondly giving you an idea is this somebody that you want to work with, is this somebody that you want to invest your time because that's really what it is, is it's an investment of your time to begin to work with somebody and you have to look at it as an investment of your time. You only are given 24 hours. If there's somebody on this call that was given more than 24 hours when you woke up, I'd love it if you give me a call when we're done because I'd like to know how you did it. But the reality is, is we are all given 24 hours when we wake up. What we do with that time is important. And I am not willing to spend my business time trying to develop a relationship and trying to get referrals and leads out of somebody that, quite frankly, I don't believe is, is a good match for me. We're not a good personality match. Maybe they're, business, they're looking at their business in a different light or they're fat and sassy. They all, I, I do all the business I can do. Fantastic. So what you're telling me is you're not interested in growing your business? Listen, I don't think we're a good match for one another. It, it's important to, to have that. So the survey is, and these questions, this realtor needs assessment, it's not just to get them to answer a whole bunch of questions for you so you can know what their production is. It's to, it's to get them to know that you're different and to give you an idea as to whether or not this is somebody that is a, a good prospect or somebody that you're, that's worth your investment of your business time. And Jeff's saying, I like to use, just as I know you would find it hard or impossible to sell someone a home without meeting them, it's the same for my business. Let's meet for 15 minutes. That's a great way to do it. You know, if you've got somebody that starts asking you those questions, you know, well, what do you mean you help me grow my business? How? Well, Jeff, just as you know, it's probably very hard or impossible to sell someone a home over the phone or to, to win a listing over the phone. And I find it the same in terms of finding good quality referral partners and networking partners in our industry. I would love to sit down with you for 20 or 30 minutes, get to know you a little bit better, and find out if our style of business is a good match for one another. I'd love to treat you to that coffee. I've got Thursday available. Will you be around the office on Thursday at 3 o'clock? Fantastic. I'll be by your office at 3 o'clock. Now some of you guys have heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again to make sure it gets caught on the recorder. I prefer those first face-to-face -face meetings, I prefer to try to have them at the target's office, like the realtor's office. I try, by all means and, and, and methods, I try to get them to allow me to meet them at their office. And I'll tell you exactly why. Those first face-to-faces, there's no relationship there. There's no... There's nothing for them to feel obligated to meet you other than they said they would. Now, we know, you guys have, can attest to this, we know that realtors are infamous for trying, you know, they, they don't hold those kind of meetings as important to them because they don't know what you've got to offer. They're used to being called on by lenders, love to meet you, and then here's my rate sheet, we've got the best rates in town, and I get you to the closing table, and I'm great at the communication. They hear that all the time. They hear those things. And so they don't know that you're different yet because you haven't had that opportunity to differentiate yourself. That short, quick call to get that appointment doesn't give you that opportunity to do so very often. You have to have some small thing that gets them to want to meet with you 
But that's just it. It's just a meeting. And for them, it's not an important, it's not like a closing, it's not a pre-listing appointment. You're meeting with the lender to get a cup of coffee. You're getting treated to a cup of coffee. So I try to have that first meeting at their office. And the reason being is because when I call to confirm, I'm doing it in a way that allows me to have an advantage and ensure that I'm going to get to actually meet that person face to face and shake their hand, tell them I'm Paul Baxter and thank you for meeting me, and talk to them a few minutes and actually get that, that meeting. Because it's pretty easy to get an agent to commit to a meeting, getting them to show up to a meeting, that's the, that's the hard part, quite frankly. That really is the part that's a little bit more difficult. And so what I do trying to meet them at their office, what I do then is I don't call them the day before to confirm. If you call them the day before to confirm, 90% of the time you're going to get, oh, Jeff, thank you for calling me. I was just getting ready to call you. I've got something X and X or so-and-so came up. I'm not going to be able to meet you tomorrow at our appointment time. I'll have to put it off. Can we do it next week? You know what's going to happen next week with that same person? If you do the same thing, you're going to call the day before to confirm your appointment. Oh, doggone it, Jeff. I meant to call you. I've got so-and-so came up. I'm not going to be able to meet you tomorrow. That's if, if and only if. They don't just do the old blow off and not even answer your call. A lot of times, once you've got that scheduled and you call to confirm, they see your name and number come up on their smartphone or their cell phone when you're calling to confirm. They let it go to voicemail. And then you do what you're supposed to do. You leave the message, hey, this is Paul Baxter, Jeff. I was calling to confirm our meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I'm really looking forward to you. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call, 555-1212, and most of the time they don't return that call. You never hear back from them. Sure enough, you show up at the Panera Bread at the appointed time, and guess who doesn't show up? Now you're sitting there with your cup of coffee on your laptop trying to figure out where you're going to get your next meeting, and your business time has been wasted. If you do it at their office, if you can get them to agree to a meeting at their office, Here's how you do it. Instead of calling the day before, you wait to one hour before the, the call, before the appointment. One hour. Make your call within the hour of that appointment. Hey, Jeff, it's Paul Baxter. I'm on my way to our meeting. I'm driving from so-and-so. I'm getting ready to stop at the Starbucks and grab your coffee. What do you prefer? Regular, decaf, hot or cold? Are you a mocha guy, a latte guy, or a regular coffee guy? Do you want this or do you want that? I'm not calling to confirm the appointment. I'm calling to find out what kind of coffee I can treat you to for when I come by your office in 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Most people, because we're human beings, we want people to like us. I'm not going to say all, but most human beings want other people to like them. If I'm calling 30 minutes, 45 minutes before our appointment time, that's not enough wiggle room for them to be able to say, oh man, I was just getting ready to call you, so and so came up, I'm not going to be able to meet with you. It doesn't give them that opportunity because it's too close to the appointment time for them to be able to do that and for you to still like them. So they're more likely to just tell you what kind of coffee they want. They may have their eyes rolling in the background. I don't care. I I know that I'm going to get that face-to-face. -face. It's at their office and I'm not calling to confirm just a little bit of time beforehand. I'm calling to find out if they want regular or decaf, hot or cold. Do you have a specific flavor that you like? That's it. So that's that's why I you know when I'm trying, especially that first meeting, you want to try and do it at their office. Those of you guys, and and I see that there are several of you on the call right now that utilize the agent marketing system, the single property system. That's another opportunity. If you're at their office, you can actually talk about some of those things given the right amount of time, as long as the relationship's going well. But remember. 
when using the realtor needs assessment, you want to absolutely be respectful of their time. I've heard from several lenders. Oh man, I got the first meeting, we sat down and it was supposed to be, I had a 15 minute meeting with them and an hour and a half later we were still talking. That feels like a good thing because you're talking and there's good conversation going, but at the end of the day, is that hour and a half the best use of your time? Is that the best use of your business time? And secondly, it it's almost a disrespect of their your target's business time. You absolutely need to respect your part your, your potential partner's business time. Try your best to keep within that time frame that you said that you were going to do it. Now for me, and I this is the last part of this realtor needs assessment I want to cover, the thing I like the best about this, and it covers all the questions, make sure you read through it, but the thing I like the best about this is what you do at the end. This gives you the built-in second appointment. It's built right into the realtor needs assessment. It's built in. So, Jeff, what I heard you say is that getting more listings is the most important thing about your real estate business. What would getting more listings ultimately do for your life? Wait, answer. Awesome. Jeff, listen, thank you for the time today. I'd like to respect the initial time limit that I asked you for because I understand your business time is very important. And I'd also like to think about our discussion and read through my notes. And then next week I'd like to bring back some ideas on how we might be able to help you maintain and exceed the goals that you told me you had for your business. If I'm able to help you with that, would you consider partnering, partnering with me and referring me business? It's a trial close. The main thing with that trial close is, first and foremost, you're giving yourself that built-in reason for that second face-to-face, -face, but you're also letting them know that you're doing it with the intention of developing a partnership to exchange referrals and leads, to help them get more closing, to do more business together. So you've got a built-in reason to meet again, and you're planting the seed, or as our good friend Alan likes to say, you're buying that brain cell that makes them realize or think about a potential partnership with you. Okay? And so it's, it's all about having that purpose behind what you're saying. Everything that you do needs to be purposefully planned out. Have it set. Know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. What you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And then give yourself that chance for that second opportunity. You know, I hear it all the time. Man, I, I got the first face-to-face. -face. I went through my stuff. They loved every bit of it. What do I do next? Especially like for those of y'all using that agent marketing system, I hear it more frequently with that. I had a face-to-face -face with them. I showed them my little system. They loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. They thought it was slick as ice. They wanted it. But I haven't heard from them yet to do my first property with them. Because you didn't give yourself a built-in reason to follow up. You've got to build those reasons into follow up. You've got to build those reasons into those you know, each meeting that you have, have a plan in place for at the end of that meeting to set up that next opportunity. That's what this Realtor Needs Assessment gives you the opportunity to do. And like I said, we're going to cover this week, at the end of this week, we're going to be covering what we call the commitment letter, which is a culmination of the needs assessment. It brings into play the things that you discovered during the Realtor Needs Assessment. It brings into play, it, it brands you as somebody different because you're, first of all, the commitment letter shows what you yourself are committed to, and then it asks them to commit to things in addition. So we're going to cover that wholeheartedly, and it the two of these items tie in together very, very well. Um, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Not much of a presentation. Like I said, it's more of an open discussion. Did anyone have any questions about the Realtor Needs Assessment? 
how to get it. I know, Bill, you had that question about how to get it. We'll get in touch with one another um, a little bit later, and we'll make sure that, that you understand how to get access to it as well. But are there any questions about it, how to use it, what to say, when to say it, anything like that? And I highly recommend, uh, guys, go back on this recording today and listen to it when we talked about how to set it up, how to ask for that appointment and how to set up before you start asking the questions on the list, because that's a big part of it is the setup. If you don't set it up, they're not going to answer the questions for you. But if you set it up properly, you'll be in good shape. You'll get those people to answer those questions the right way. Does anybody have any questions about today's stuff? Let me pop this baby open. Looks like not. Alrighty. Um, guys, girls. Appreciate you hanging out with me today. Good, good call, I think. I think we talked about a lot of good stuff, came up with some good ideas. Uh, my man Jeff, keep up the great work on your video stuff. It is, they're getting better and better. You're just getting more natural with each and every go with it, man. It, and, and from what I read in your comments with your video this week, it's getting easier for you too, which is... That's a big bonus because the easier it gets for you, the more likely you are to keep doing it on a consistent basis. And uh, the reality is, is consistency is what's going to make all the difference for you. Guys, girls, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I appreciate your time. I respect your time. I'm going to keep it, uh, keep it at that. I look forward to seeing you right back here, same time, same place on Wednesday. And uh, we'll do some more masterminding. Guys, girls, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye now.